April. Hi, this is Allie from Mobile Monkey, and I'm going to go through everything you need to know about getting started building your bot. So first of all, you're going to go to mobilemonkey.com and you're going to click log in right here. If you don't have an account, it's going to prompt you to create one. Just go through the steps and you'll be all set. Um, next, it's going to bring you to your dashboard. So I have a couple different pages here. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to show you my custom jewelry bot. It's just a test bot. Uh, I don't actually have a custom jewelry shop, but it does work for purposes of demonstrating how the product works. So first of all, you're going to be brought into your dashboard, and you can always return to your dashboard at any time by clicking this mobile monkey button right up here. You're going to see your companies. Uh, if you have multiple companies, most of you will not, but some people do uh, have bots in multiple companies. So I have a couple in here, as you can see. I can switch between them like that. And if I want to add a new Facebook page that I'm an admin on, I could do that right here. So you're only going to put one bot on each Facebook page and that's all you need. You can put all of the content that you need within one bot. You can run messenger ads, um, standard content of just conversational pieces, you can run comment guards, all from one bot. So uh, I would enter my chatbot builder here. If I don't have a bot, I would click create new bot. Um, if you do need to create another bot, for example, if you have an off hours bot versus an on hours bot, you would go down into more chatbots, which is advanced. You don't really want to do that unless you have a very specific purpose and you can create a bot right here. And you can create that bot from scratch. You can build it from a template. We have a few templates in here that you can choose from. Or you can copy an existing bot. So if you want to duplicate your bot and put it on a new page or you want to duplicate it and just make some changes, you can do that uh, by copying your existing chatbot. So now I'm going to take a look into my chatbot builder. So I'm going to click enter chatbot builder and it brings me right into my welcome page. And if you don't know what the welcome page is, it's basically the first bit of content that's going to be shown to your user when they click that get started button after clicking send message to your page on Facebook. So um, a page is basically just a little block of content that you can tie together to other pages uh, to create conversation flows. So you can create if then scenarios using pages. For example, if I was saying, do you prefer gold or silver, I would send um, people who preferred gold to a page for gold pieces and silver to a page for silver pieces. But we'll get into that a little bit later. So you have your three basic pages that your bot comes pre-programmed with. Your welcome page, again, that's just the first page they'll see. Your default page. So this is the page that is going to send to your users if they say something to your bot that the bot isn't programmed to understand. So for example, if I was running this uh, jewelry bot and someone said something to it like, uh, how much does it cost to use the water slide at your water park? That's totally irrelevant. My bot's not going to know what they're saying. It's going to say, sorry, I'm just a bot, but someone real will be right with you and you can make any changes that you want. The main menu is just the hamburger menu that's going to appear in the bottom corner of your bot. You want to keep it really basic. Uh, it's more if someone gets a little stuck in your bot and you want them to have the option to go somewhere else or you want to send them a link to your website. Um, you can just add some buttons to it. You can add sub menus. Uh, you can link it to URLs like your website or you can send it to a specific page in the bot. So that is the three basic pages and you can build out other pages and groups down here. So your groups are basically folders that house your pages. Uh, it doesn't affect the functionality of the bot whatsoever. It's mainly just for your own organizational purposes. So um, for example, I have a group called Silver Pieces and I have lots of Silver Piece pages in here. So I can keep them really organized and I know where all my pages are and I'm not clicking through all these pages trying to figure out where my content is. So my main group is my default group that's automatically in there already, and I can add pages in there if I'd like to, but I could also add pages in any of my other groups, and you just add a page by clicking this blue Add Page button. So just to show you an example of how you would add a page and maybe link it, um, I'll go back to my Welcome page, and I asked a question, do you prefer gold or silver? And I'm going to say, custom silver pieces. Um, the associated page here I've linked as custom silver pieces which I've built out and then if I go down here I can see that this is the page it will bring them to. So just to go over that again I say do you prefer gold or silver? They click silver and it brings them to this page. 
and this page is fun. It says, great taste, let's get started. And that has a cool GIF here because everybody loves Beyonce, so want to keep people engaged and happy. <laughs> um, and then I ask another question, what type of jewelry are you looking for? So in order to add this content onto this page, I'm going to use widgets. So you can see up here you have a couple different widgets, which are basically just pieces of content in your bot. So we have the text widget, which is really simple right here. Great taste. Let's get started. You can add a button here as well. Um, the button can link to a page within your bot, a phone number, or a URL. So the URL will bring them to an external website. So it's, it's good to keep them within the bot for the most part, just because you want to keep that bot conversation going, but you can use the URL if you want as well. Next, we have the image widget. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's just for putting pictures into your bot. And now we have the form widget, which is a little bit more complicated. Uh, I can show you an example of that down here. I have a group called forms. So the basic use of a form is to gather a lot of data from your user in one point. So uh, if I was trying to create a contact me form or something like that, I could say, uh, what's your phone number? Uh, what's your email? What's the best way to contact you? And uh, I would just do that by adding questions to my form. And if you're not quite sure how to do that, there's no need to panic. We do have separate videos on how to use each and every one of these widgets. So feel free to go take a look at those if you want to learn more. So after the form is the quick question widget, which is probably the most common uh, widget you'll use. It's probably the most useful. It's really great for engagement. So there's one right here. Again, where I showed you, it says, do you prefer gold or silver? That's just a quick question. And it's going to ask you to save that to an attribute. And what an attribute is, is it's um, a tag that's going to create a field in uh, your contacts. So it's going to mark every user based on what they chose. So I save it to the attribute metal, and then my user clicks gold or silver, and it saves that information into the contact, and I can retarget later based on that information that I've saved. So that's the quick question. Um, you can link these answers to associated pages like we talked about before, just to keep the conversation going, which is definitely what you want to do. You want to keep that conversation flowing. Next, we have the GIF widget, which is um, like that picture of Beyonce I showed you. It's just a little video, uh, pretty self-explanatory. There's a whole lot of them in there if you want to use them. Uh, they're really fun, and they're good for engagement, so I recommend using them. And then we have a whole lot more down here. <laughs> so the attachment widget, this one's just for adding attachments into your bot, like PDFs. Uh, the attribute widget, this is basically to tag a user, but it's a standalone widget and it's hidden from them. So if you want to tag someone who visited a certain page and sort them into an audience, you would use the attribute widget. Connection widget is for um, the connections tool. We'll go over that a bit later. The email widget uh, basically will send an email to you or your sales team or whoever you choose to at a certain point in the bot with, uh, it can include customer uh, name, it can include other information that you've gathered from them, from those attributes. The gallery widget is a really cool one. It's uh, good for use if you're trying to show a product line or something like that. You can put a picture in of your products and a link to your website or a description and those will display horizontally so the user can click through them in your bot side to side. The list widget is very similar to the gallery widget. The only difference is that it displays vertically rather than horizontally. So all of your products will show at once in Messenger rather than your user clicking through them side to side. So it's just whatever aesthetic you're looking for. You can choose gallery or list. The navigate widget is exactly what it sounds like. It'll bring um, all of your contacts or a specific audience to another page in your bot without them having to click anything. The typing widget just emulates typing. Uh, it makes it feel like a little bit more personal. So if you want to make it seem like somebody is um, actually responding and not just a robot firing answers immediately, you can use this. And then the video widget, this one is also pretty self-explanatory. You can just upload a video into your bot. So that is how you add all this really cool content into your bot. And now we've gone through all of that, so I'm going to show you all the tools. So Pages, we, are, we just went over that. That's how you add content to your bot. 
Q&A is basically trigger words. So if I want someone to get sent to the welcome page when they type start over or home, I could just say home, I hit enter, and now whenever someone types home or start over, they'll get brought to my welcome page automatically. So this is cool for making your bot more responsive. So if you want your bot to uh, be able to interact and engage with your users a little bit more, you definitely want to use the Q&A. Next we have marketing automation. The first one is Chat Blaster. This one's really simple. It's basically just like an email blast. So you can send a mass message to people. Um, all of these tools we do have videos for as well. So if you're feeling a little bit lost or like I'm rushing through this, feel free to just go pause this video and take a look at the individual videos for each and every tool. Drip Campaigns is uh, how you can send sequentially timed messages automatically. So if you're trying to keep that engagement up and keep people interested in your product by sending them automatic messages, you should use a drip campaign. Uh, they're really, really great for engagement and for getting those leads converted, so I definitely recommend those. Next we have the RSS Blaster. This is useful if you have a blog or a different feed that you'd like to automatically send to your opt-in clients. So if you're running a blog and you ask your clients, are you interested in receiving blog updates? And they say yes. You create an audience out of that and then you uh, can set this feed to automatically send every time a change is made to it. So every time you put a new blog post up, it's going to notify the um, users that you have done so. And next we have connections, which is a way to send information out of your bot or to pull it in. So if you are looking to export all of your contacts to a CRM automatically, you can do that using a connection. You can also pull some data into your bot. Uh, you can pull in rows from spreadsheets and other things like that. Um, we do use a webhook for this. So you'll have to use a third party system like Zapier or something like that, but they're really easy to use and do have free models. So connections are just a really cool way to personalize your bot and to make use of those leads that you have collected. So next we have our lead magnets. So the first lead magnet is messenger ads, which we definitely recommend running. Those are really, really good for um, getting leads into the bot. So if you're running ads already, you should run them as messenger ads, and then you can have your bot automatically send a message to anyone who clicks that send message button on those ads. And then they opt in and their contacts, you can retarget them in the future. You can create custom Facebook audiences out of them. So it's a really, really good lead gen tool. So next we have Comment Guard. Comment Guard will send a message automatically to anyone who comments on a specified post or boosted post or ad or dark post. So it's great as a standalone tool, but also as a tool that you can use in conjunction with your messenger ads. Uh, we really recommend using this one. It's easy to use and it's great for gathering leads. In HTML elements, we have four different elements you can add. First one is the customer chat widget, meaning you can put this bot directly on your website and have people chat with it directly from the website, which is great because you're gathering those contacts and their information and you can target them later. And it's also just a little bit easier than going from Messenger. Link to Messenger will create a link directly to your bot. So whatever page you choose, you can put in your email signature or anywhere you want. You can just generate a link directly to your bot. Checkbox plugin will create a checkbox opt-in in a form on your website uh, if you're looking to have people opt-in that way. And a send to messenger button will create a button on your website or wherever else you put it that will allow people to be sent to your bot if they just click uh, send to messenger. So those are also great ways to drive traffic to your bot from other outside sources. Next we have landing pages. Landing pages are good for getting that organic traffic and they act as a sort of buffer between the link to your bot and your actual bot uh, because sometimes when people click that uh, link to Messenger, if it wasn't explained well enough to begin with, they might be confused. Why is Messenger opening? What is going on? Um, so you can use landing pages as an opportunity to explain uh, what's happening. You can put your brand on them. You can put your logo, uh, a picture. Uh, add a little bit of more content to explain that 
the button is going to open up Messenger and they're going to be chatting with a chat bot. Next we have scan codes which are also referred to as QR codes. These are good for trade shows or anything like that. And if you create a scan code, your users can just open up Messenger on their phone and open up the camera and hold on that code and it will automatically open up your bot. So that's a cool, fun way to get a little bit more engagement and to get those leads in. So that's it for lead magnets and now we have audience insights. So the first thing in audience insights is contacts which is uh, really the important thing. <laughs> these are the people that you're going to be marketing to. So if you click into these contacts, you can see their attributes in their form submissions and their chat sessions. Uh, but these attributes are how you're going to create audiences based on your contacts. Um, and you can see all of your audiences right here. So I have one called Silver Lovers, for example. Um, and I've put a filter on that that's metal equals silver so that means whoever chose uh, that they preferred silver over gold I'll put them into one category and maybe I'll send them a chat blast based on that forms this will just collect every form that I have in my bot and will show me the stats on that like the impressions so how many people have started it the amount of people that finished it my conversion rate um, the date it was created Next we have bot analytics, so this will just show you a couple of stats within your bot. So in these analytics you can see your total contacts, your new contacts, uh, your conversions, and your sessions so you can keep track of how your bot's doing. Obviously my bot is a little bit stagnant seeing as it's not an actual company, it's just a test bot. And last but not least we have settings. So your settings are just going to control the basics of your bot, like the name, whether or not it's active on the page. So this is whether it's responding to people from the page. Um, bot response settings, so how your bot responds to um, things that it doesn't understand. Your quick messages, meaning how your bot responds um, when people don't behave in expected way, like when, they, when you give them two options to choose from and they just say something random, um, stuff like that. Then you have subscription settings. You're going to need to have an unsubscribe in your bot because Facebook requires that. So you can set up your unsubscribe message and then you can set your language, which is just for NLP. So if someone puts a typo in, um, it'll pick up on that based on the language. So that is it for settings and bot building and the basics of using the tools. Uh, that definitely covered a lot. So if you need a little bit more help, go ahead and click the help button up here that you see in your upper right hand corner of your dashboard and we have specified videos for each and every one of those tools and widgets and pages and anything else you can think of. So thank you for watching and good luck building your bot.